Hello, thank you for joining me on this screencast, which will be a tutorial on understanding polarization effect in Raman scattering. This uh, screencast is not so much about uh, the detail of the physical phenomenon of uh, Raman scattering. Uh, I have a couple of other tutorials on this YouTube channel if you're interested in that. Here, I'm going to focus solely on the polarization effect and uh, provide interpretation from mathematics from mathematics, but also from a graphical perspective on what's happening. And I hope it's, it's useful to you. So the outline will be as, as follows. Uh, I will first talk about definitions uh, and Raman scattering and see what happens when we shine light to a sample and we have a Raman scattering effect. Um, then I will talk about the polarization effect and we are actually going to analyze this equation here. This is basically the goal of this of this screencast and making sure we understand. And then we'll talk about the mat mathematical interpretation. Uh, what I've noticed over the years is that uh, students and, uh, and practitioners have difficulties with the tensor. The fact that alpha, the Raman, the Raman tensor is a tensor, uh, sometimes bring a little bit of difficult, uh, difficulty interpretation, but there's no reason for that. There's nothing scary about the tensor as I will show. Uh, I will then talk about a graphical interpretation. Uh, as I was preparing this, this uh, tutorial, I realized that there was a very easy way to explain everything using just a graphical interpretation and doing very little math. So just geometry, I, I think it's kind of, of nice and, and I hope you will find that nice as well. So it will be based on this picture like this. And finally, I will study um, a fairly typical setup, which, has, which includes a double wave plate setup. And I will show that this graphical interpretation makes it very easy to understand uh, th this setup there that I show uh, with, with the reference um, here on this outline. So I think we are ready to go. Uh, so uh, imagine that you have a sample here and then uh, you are shining light on the sample. So you have light with a wave vector Ki, I is incoming. And of course it has a polarization which is orthogonal to the to, to the direction, to the wave vector. So the polarization of the incoming light is GI. There's some scattering, something happens on the sample and the light is reflected back. Uh, and then we are looking at the specific reflection along KS, which is the wave vector of the scattered light with a polarization GS. So here throughout the screencast, uh, I will be for incoming or initial and S will be for scattered. So now the equation that you really need to know, and this is, this is a good approximation for Raman scattering in a semi-classical approach, is the one that's shown, shown uh, in the, in the gray, gray box on the top right. That equation gives you the intensity and it, it, respond, it, it answers this question. If I shine light with polarization GI to a material, what is the intensity of the response along GS. So something that's important to realize is that you can have various um, scattering uh, 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 along a specific GS. Here the GS is actually the one you are using in your measurement. So it's basically what the, the scientist picks as, as, a, as a direction of measurement. Now alpha is a 3 by 3 Raman tensor. So that's why this equation is fine. It's intensity, so it's a scalar on the left and you have a vector um, times a tensor times uh, the transpose of a vector. So if you look at, at all the dimensionality, uh, it's all good. It's a one by three times a three by three times a three by one. So you end up with reduction of the indices so one by one, so it's a scalar, it's fine. But I've seen that uh, quite a few difficulties in students to understand what's going on. So that's what this, this, this screencast is about. First of all, a, few de a couple of definitions. Uh, we hear about backscattering. The backscattering is essentially uh, what happens when Ki and Ks are parallel and they are normal to a surface. So this is actually a very typical uh, setup simply because uh, this is the one that gives usually the most intensity. Uh, but there's no reason for that to be the case. Sometimes uh, if you want to explore uh, some of the element of the Raman tensor, you may need to actually go come to an angle. But here in this screencast, I'm actually going to focus on backscattering, but everything I'm saying today could apply to non-backscattering conditions 
Second, what is parallel scattering? We, so we hear about parallel scattering. In this case, we suppose that the polarization GI of the incoming light and the polarization GS of the scattered light are parallel. So typical case is that the polarization is along X. So in that case, we would note that particular mode ZXX Z bar. So that means that Z is a direction of the incoming light Z bar is a direction of the outgoing light, so it's backscattering, and X is the polarization of the incoming light, and the other X is the polarization of the outgoing light. So you read the ZXX Z bar as backscattering in a parallel mode where the polarization are along X. Now you can also have cross scattering. In this case, GI and GS are perpendicular, for example, X and Y, and the notation likewise is ZXY Z bar. Good. Now, let's go to the equation that we're interested in. This is the equation we're interested in. And uh, um, basically, that's what I'm going to talk about for the rest of this screencast. Uh, the scattered light polarization is GS, and the incoming light polarization is GI. So I'd like you to start already to have an idea of what you have here. You essentially have a polarization uh, tensor. which you, you can look at it as an operator, and this operator in fact, operates on GI to provide another vector, which is then uh, projected on GS. So I'm just giving you here a, a preview just so that your brain start to work with this idea. But we are going to talk about that for the, for the, for the rest of the screencast. So before we do that, let's just, do, let's just apply this equation without worrying too much about the interpretation, the mathematical or graphical interpretation. And for that, I'm going to pick the, the choice. The, um, I, I, I picked MOS2, which is a 2D material, uh, because um, the Raman active mode, E2G and A1G, uh, really cover, uh, they, they do cover everything that I want to talk about for the different types of Raman uh, scattering. So you can apply this to any tensor that you, that you use. So we have those tensors, um, doubly degenerated E mode and uh, sing singly degenerate A mode. And we pick the polarizations. So the polarizations are really cho uh, choices of, of the uh, practitioner. Um, so let's suppose that the polarization that I use is GI is 1, 0, 0. In other words, light is polarized along X. And GS, the scattered light that I'm measuring, I'm measuring it at angle theta. So that's nice. Already you have to understand when you read something like this what it means. First of all, um, it means that it's backscattering because the, the z-axis, in this case, of MOS2 is perpendicular to the surface, and you see the GI and GS are perpendicular to the z-axis, so in fact, it is backscattering. So right, it's coming, uh, what you measure normal to the surface. The second, uh, the incoming light is polarized along X, does not change, and then we rotate the polarization we measure in the scattered light along theta. And an example of this, and I'm going to explain that in a second in the next slide. In fact, I'm going to explain this result for the rest of this, uh, of this uh, screencast in different ways, is that the E mode and A mode are going to show differently as a function of angle. And this is what we explain. So how to explain this result here that the E mode is constant in intensity regardless of the angle of the measured polarization and why the A mode actually goes down uh, from a maximum at theta equals zero to a minimum at theta equal, equal 90 is something that I'm going to do now. Okay, so the A mode. The A mode is actually, the, the as, you, as I said a minute ago, the, the tensor of the A mode is actually a diagonal tensor. So in those tensor, usually we put zero with a dot so that it's not too heavy notation. So let's try to see how we apply the equation. So this is alpha, this is the tensor for A mode. This is the incoming light. So this is the polarization of the incoming light. As I said, it's polarized along X, so 1, 0, 0 with the transpose. And then GS, the, scattered, the, the polarization of the scattered light is along theta. So this is a fairly easy equation to, so to, to, to apply, of course, because the 1, 0, 0 and so many zeros. And we end up with B cos theta. So the intensity is proportional to the square of that. Therefore, the total intensity is going to go as b squared cosine squared theta, which explains the result for a, for the, for the intensity of a. a is maximum at theta equals 0 and 0 at theta equals 90. 
Now, what about the E modes? What are the e why are the E modes of constant intensity? Well, you have to realize you have two, two E modes. The first one is a Raman tensor, which is here, and uh, which, is, which is not a diagonal tensor. So again, the polarization 1, 0, 0, cos theta, sine theta 0. And when you solve this, you get a sine theta. If you look at the other E mode, which is uh, given by this, uh, this tensor here, you find that you have cos theta sine theta 0, 1, 0, 0. And when you apply this, you have A cos theta. So one thing that uh, you have to realize here, there is no interference between the mode. Each mode has its own intensity. So the intensity of the first mode would be A square sine square theta. The intensity of the second mode would be A square cos, cos square theta. And of course, the, the sum of the two will be A square times cos square theta plus sine square theta, which of course is a constant, and the intensity is a constant. So this is how you understand the polarization effect. And in fact, if you want it, and if you don't want to work harder than this, you can just stop here. And if you understand this, that's all you need to know. What I'm suggesting to do in the rest of the screencast, though, is to provide an interpretation that allows for more intuition uh, as, as to what happens, and also in a specific setup that I want to talk to you about. So the way the polarization vectors are expressed depends on the specific experimental setup. So here I use GI as a constant, GS is changing, but those can actually depend on what you decide to do experimentally. So these are illustrations of backscreen, backscattering and keeping the polarization of the laser constant, but in general, the area, the, the, the setup is not backscattering, it can be more complicated, and it's all about solving this equation. Now, what I'd like to do now is to go a little bit more into understanding what we actually do with the math and with that, we can start working on a geometrical interpretation that I find very easy to apply and gives you a lot of intuition of what's going on. Okay, mathematical interpretation. At the end of the day, we have this equation. And so sometimes what is a bit scary is tensor. What's a tensor? Well, a tensor is a three by three, uh, when it's expressed in a basis, is a three by three object which is basically the goal of a tensor is to transform what's on its right, on the right-hand side here. So alpha j g i t, by the way, j is the index of the phonon, but it doesn't matter here. It doesn't, doesn't really matter in, the, in this specific uh, context. This, this uh, alpha is going to, uh, to apply to g. And it's because alpha is a three by three and g is a three by one, you see that the effect of alpha is to rotate and rescale the vector. So the output, the outcome of alpha applied to, applied to G is another vector that is not, in the, not necessarily in the same direction as G and not necessarily in the same length. So the role of a tensor is, rotate and is to rotate and rescale a vector. That's always true. That's always a situation that we have in physics. Sometimes we get scared about the word tensor, but there's nothing to be scared about. For example, if I look at the tensor for the A mode in MOS2, BBC, imagine that this applies to the vector cos theta sine theta zero. Well, basically you are transforming this vector into this vector, B cos theta, B sine theta zero. So what's interesting here is because your tensor is diagonal, there's actually no rotation you see that the outgoing, the, the result here, B cos theta, B sine theta, is parallel to cos theta sine theta, but there is a rescaling by a factor B, which is the element of the Raman tensor. So the outgoing vector is parallel to the original one because the tensor is diagonal, and the effect is just a rescaling by B. Well, one thing that's interesting for those of you who like linear algebra, the tensor is not unitary because a unitary transfer would actually not change the length. But let's not worry about that too much. But what's important, and this is really what I like about this interpretation, and you do not even have to worry about the physical phenomena in Raman to understand this, is that Raman scattering can be seen as a machine which is just a tensor that rotates and rescale a vector. So you, have, you can look at that as a black box which is described by a tensor, and the only thing it does is rotate and rescale the tensor. Uh, rescale the vector, sorry. So now, this is very, if you, if you are convinced of this, which is actually what's on this slide, 
What matters now is to go to the final step, is to see what component of what I just described, so the effect of the tensor on a vector, projects, this is the dot product here, project on GS. And that is going to give you the amplitude of Raman. So this is actually beautiful because if you get this, everything can be done graphically. And before that, let me just make to make sure that the ideas are, 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 are clear for you. Let me explain uh, first the, um, the, the, parallel the, 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 the effect on the parallel polarization on A mode. So we hear about parallel polarization. Let me remind you what we have. Parallel polarization means that G, I, and G, S are, um, are parallel. That's exactly what's happening here, cos theta, sine theta, zero. It is the A mode, so we are using this BBC tensor. Now, it goes pretty easy to apply the tensor to cos theta, sine theta, zero. And of course, these are two vectors that are parallel, so the dot product is just the, the length of the of the the, the, the square of the lengths here of the of between the two, so it's B. So it's interesting because the Raman in this case, the, the intensity will be B square, and it's clear that it is a constant. Why is that a constant? Well, because the Raman machine does not rotate the vector. So if you do not rotate the vector and you're in a parallel configuration, so always look at basically the projection of the vector on another vector that's parallel, it's gonna be a constant. Right now, what about the perpendicular per polarization? Well, in this case, what I'm doing, I'm just rotating the GS, so the scattered light, by pi over two. That's exactly what this is, and this is what it means. Now, if you divide, multiply, uh, add pi over two, you know your trigonometry uh, is cos theta pi plus pi over two is minus sine theta as sine theta plus pi over two e cosine theta might be a good, uh, good time to pause the screencast and convince you of that, but this is what you have. Of course, those two vectors are perpendicular, and if you do a dot product between two perpendicular vectors, you get a result of zero. So it's clearly zero since the dot product between two vectors normal to one another is always zero. Now, I'm going to um, pause the screencast here um, because, and, and, and I will, in the next screencast, I will provide you the, the remaining of this presentation where I will look at graphically what's going on.